going guys we are back and hopefully just hopefully this time the sound doesn't just get completely fucked up because last time I did the Western Conference it got screwed up but then I, I, don't, I don't know what it was alright so we're just gonna dive right into this we are gonna go worst to first we went first to worst now we're gonna go worst to first of the Western Conference starting with the Colorado Avalanche now Colorado 34 points they're really not getting it done. I mean, last season, the Colorado Avalanche, they were, were a good team. They were a decent team. You look at the previous year, you know, they had a good 41, 35, and 6 record. You know, that's all right. You figure this year they're going to improve. No, they did terribly. And But scoring-wise, as I said before, you find out with the higher-ranked teams, it's not necessarily the scoring. It's really the goals against. And this is true in both aspects. I mean, you got your top scorers for P.A. Power and Poe. And Matt Duchesne, um, who got 40 and 39. But then after that, just drops off to 20. So there's really no, the depth scoring isn't high. Uh, some of the shot percentages are lower than you, you, you want to. And their defense isn't that great either. I mean, Tyson Barry and Jan Hedda, Jan Hedda, I know, are their top. And um, I don't know, just not producing. It's really defensive, as I said. And also, one of their best defensemen, Eric Johnson, their best defenseman's out. So is goalie. Simon Varlamov, so Jiggy uh, is left to deal with it, but Jaguar right now is being is a little bit better than Varlamov this year, and maybe Varlamov could be one of the reasons why they're not good anyway. Um, I predict that, I guess, I mean, they're all right, but I predict that I guess they'll just stay and last. All right, next, we've got the, oh, excuse me, uh, we've got the Calgary Flames, that's right. The Calgary Flames. Now, with Calgary, um, the thing with them, though, is they're pretty bad on D. They're, they're good on offense. They're bad on D. They got rid of Jerome Aginla, which sort of hurt them. I mean, he wasn't a goal game player, uh, a point of game player, excuse me. Um, one of their top players that they gave away, honestly, was Michael Camillari, because Michael Camillari... No, wait, what am I saying? They didn't give away Michael Camillari. I'm a goof. No, wait, they didn't. No, that was... Jo I'm thinking... Forget what I just said, but Michael Camillari, big part of theirs, big part of them. Um, Alex Tangay also, and Curtis Glencross. But the big story is Lee Stemniak. He's he's a big assist guy, and you know what? You just say to that, you're kind of thinking, well, you know, that, is this really what Calgary's come up to? I mean, it really should be Kamalari, Tange, Glenn Cross, and Stajan that are your top players. Uh, also, they got rid of they get they uh, traded Jay Bomeister away. That was tough, and uh, they got the the young rookie. I gotta say it from Giants Permanent. You got Barchuzzi, Barchuzzi, Sven Barchi. I don't know how he calls him Barchuzzi, but anyway. Um, but then you, I mean, you look at some of these shot percentages. They're really good. You look at Alex Tange, who scored on. 25% of his shots, you look at a guy like Curtis Glencross who scored 17% about. But then you look at their defense and they've got no defense. I mean, you look at their leading defensive score. I mean, I know you can't look at leading defensive score, but that's they have a minus 7 and a minus 11. Their top two defensive lines, uh, Mike Giordano and TJ Brody, you just can't have that. In net, um, well, I, there's not much to say. When Mika Kippersoff is just having... God awful year, god awful year. The Kip Kipper it looks like he needs to go back to Sim Liga because he's just doing horribly. I mean, six and thirteen, a point eight seven two save percentage, a three point six goals against average, no shots by anyone. I mean, Jimmy McDonald, Joey McDonald is their best player, is their best goaltender. I mean, he has above point nine, and he has um, a two point eight four. Hold on. All right, I'm going to cut that part out just now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you get Leland Irving. Um, I mean, you get Joey McDonald, and then they, they have a series of backups. I don't know. But Calgary not doing well either. They're, they're down in the pl they're down for a plummet, man. I mean, it's, it's sad to see Calgary. They were trying to get back up there, and they just fell right back down. And I mean, I don't know if it's just the half season, but whatever. Um, for them... You know what? I actually say that they move up uh, to. I move. They they move to twelfth only because they've been a lot better than the next two teams coming up of late. 
one of those teams, the Nashville Predators, a team who has lost one of their key defensemen, Ryan Suter, and um, they still have Shea Weber, but he's their he's their leading score right now. When when a defenseman's your leading score, all I fucking gotta tell you is he better be Bobby Orr, otherwise, it's it's not that good. That means you're not a, a strong offensive team, and and they never have been. I mean, Paul Correa. I think with 86 points was had their most points in a season. You can't, you know, at 86 points is your most points in a season. You look at even even Minnesota has had you know 90 points score in Gabrick. So I mean, and then you know they're, they're I'm talking about the close uh, the newer franchises. Um, yeah, but I mean they've got a lot of collective scoring, but then again they've got a lot of minuses. And the, one of the big one of the big issues is their minuses. You got a guy like Scott Hannon, a grinder on the third line D, getting Fucking minus eleven. I mean, he's only played in. He's only played about three quarters of the games, and he has minus eleven. You look at their shot percentage; is very, it's very errant. You know, it's it's it goes from sixteen point four. Their top score, Leguan. Okay, defenseman was seven. Martin Erat though, six point seven. Um, a guy, Martin Erat. You look at him, and uh, I mean, he's he's a guy who gets goals. He usually scores some goals. And by the way, he, I don't think he's. I don't think he's no longer on the team anyway. So then you got Mike Fisher, and you know what? You look at Mike Fisher, and he should be producing a lot more too. Mike Fisher has been a, one of the biggest disappointments, I'd say. He is definitely one of the mo- one of the most overrated players, Mike Fisher. I gotta say, and he's on this team in net. Pekka Rene is doing well. A lot of people thought he'd be the Vezina, but nah. This isn't just a team that just can't score. This is one of these opposite teams, and that's why I think they're gonna fall. Um, they're actually gonna. I think they're gonna actually fall into la- a second to last where Calgary is now. That's gonna happen. Nashville not not great. Falling behind. Uh, and Ryan Suter, believe it or not, I wouldn't think. I didn't think it hurt them that much. It actually does for a team that really doesn't score. Okay, we move on to Edmonton, and this is a team where everyone says, "Hey, you know, they got the top prospects. They got the top prospects every year. They're gonna do it." You know what? There's just some reason. There's some reason why Edmonton can't seem to find ways to win. I don't know what it is. You got Taylor Hall. You got your top five scorers are who do you think? You got Taylor Hall leading the way with mostly assists, 13, 28, 4. You have to cut a lot of fucking things. Um, okay, so you got Taylor, yeah. Uh, then Sam Gagne is your second scorer, 14 goals. He leads the team in goals, 21 assists, 35 points. Uh... Jordan Eberle and then Nail Yakupov and then the Nuge, the Nuge, one of the top assist guys. Who is injured? I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're all right goal scoring. Um, just for some reason, they just seem to lose games. You know, I don't know what it is. They just seem to lose games, and they haven't been well recently. I mean, they lost a bunch in a row. And in net, they had the Doob, they had the Nuge and the Doob. You know, it's crazy things. The Doob. Um, he's actually doing well. I mean, you look at his stats, his save percentage is point nine twenty two for a losing record, that's great. Um a couple pair of shutouts and a good two point five goals against average. Uh you look at shot percentage and shot percentage is actually pretty high. It's just for some reason, maybe it could be the defense, I don't know. Um, they just seem to lose games, and that's why I think they're going to be 13th, just because recently, you know, they haven't been doing well, um, you know, basically. Okay, so we move on from the Edmonton Oilers to your next uh, team up there, and that's the Phoenix Coyotes. The Phoenix Coyotes currently in the 11th spot right now. Um, <clears throat> this is, again, uh, another team which just it, they just seem to lose. You know, they just seem to lose. You look... At uh, some of their previous games, overtime loss, two nothing loss, overtime loss, overtime loss, three two two one three two. You know they lose these close games, and it's not necessarily any. It's not really necessarily any one in particular. Just they lose games. Now again, I'm not, I don't watch a lot of these teams, so I'm just going off of stats and recent games. I don't know how they play. This season, I mean, it looks like we got 14 guys with at least 10 points. That's good. You got, you know, seven guys with at least 20 points. That's good. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, their leading scorer, oddly, is a guy named Mikel Bodker, who um, uh, he just doesn't seem like a leading scorer. Mater- I don't know. He 
This is the most points he's had in his career or something like that in the shortened season. Taking a lot of shots. Um, in that Mike Smith uh, average, you know, they're an overall average team. They just, I guess it's just luck. I mean, they're over 500, and why not? You know, it's it's tough to be in the West at this time, and it's, it's all i got to say about Phoenix. And I think that they'll, you know what, with Phoenix, the interesting thing about Phoenix is you don't know really how they're going to finish up. I mean, last year they had a great year, and you know what, I think that they are going to, believe it or not, stay where they are. Out of all the things, I think that they're going to stay where they are. All right, um, then you got the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Columbus Blue Jackets are next, and this is a team that really surprised me because I thought they were just going to be the same old Blue Jackets, but that trade for Marion Gabrick, whew, it was a good trade. Uh, Derek Brassard was a key player. Uh, they had to trade him away, but they get a guy like, you know, uh, they get a guy like Marion Gabrick, and look what he's doing for them. He's got six points in six games. That's all good. You look at uh, Columbus, um, and they are not that great scoring in their uh, goals uh, goals against. So they are actually pushing a little bit uh, for a playoff spot. And I don't think they'll get it, unfortunately, but I think they'll actually be ninth. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's certain guys on the team, like defensemen like Fetter Tootin or Jack Johnson, that are busting their tail to be on this team. You look 26 minutes for Jack Johnson, 24 minutes for Fetter Tootin. You know, four or sixteen points for Jack Johnson on D, and eighteen points for Tootin. The leading scorer is Vinny Prospel, guy who's been around the league a lot, big veteran presence who knows what he's doing. Uh, it's his second year on the team, and I think I think Columbus is going to get as close as they have in a, lo a long while in making the playoffs, whether it be one point, two point. Again, this is not a prediction video, so yeah. Um, and then in net, they've got Sergey. Bobrovsky! Sergei Bobrovsky, the number one cop on the force, Bobrovsky. And he is the number one cop on the force right now. 0.932 save percentage, 2.01 goals against there. Four shots. A lot of people say he could be a Vezina winner. I don't know yet. But it's Sergei Bobrovsky. Sergei Bobrovsky doing it again. If I had a plan, I'd name it Sergei Bobrov tree. The number one tree in the yard. Let me tell you right now, it's Bobrov's tree. And Steve Mason, what a disgrace. And luckily, they, they got rid of Steve Mason. Oh, yeah, he was good like that one year. And then he f was fucking terrible afterwards. Um, so they'll, they'll be okay, but they'll be a knife. So I applaud them. Um, then you got Dallas. Uh, sorry, then you got Detroit, which I will assess next. Um, Detroit, I mean, their, their 21 game, their 21 season playoff streak is on the line. And Lidstrom left, and uh, I mean, it's it takes a toll on you. You think about it. Their leading scorer is Pavel Datsuk, a goal, a, a point a game almost. And then you have Zetterberg, who's almost a point a game also. Then it drops down, and you got Nicholas Cronwall, who's actually been a big defensive presence. He has to t take over the role of being your top defenseman, and that is very hard to do when you're falling. Nicholas Lidstrom. Let me tell you, Detroit Red Wings are handling this okay. They're sort of it's sort of like. When you're in an airplane and everything's going fine, then you hit turbulence and you sort of got to re-maintain it. Well, you know, you sort of got to re-maintain it. You're not going to fly perfectly, but you got to just kind of hold the ship up, hold the airplane up. And once, you know, you hold it up, you'll be good to go. That's what they're doing right now. They're still in that turbulence stage. And that's why I think they're going to pull through because they, they've been pretty good in their past games. Um, I mean, let's let's take a look here. You see... A lot of one-goal losses. I mean, yeah, they lost to the Blackhawks 7-1 recently. But you look at their coming, their games coming up. They have Nashville, Calgary. Okay, Vancouver, but Phoenix. Okay, LA, but Nashville and Dallas. You know, that's... I think Dallas, Detroit, that's going to decide the playoffs. The final game. That's why I say it's going to Detroit. So they'll end up in eighth. And, of course, you got a Jimmy Howard. Jimmy Howard. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, he's doing great. It's the Goose who's the problem with backup, but... I mean, Detroit, they're pushing ahead. And I think they'll, they'll barely make it up there. And they they just, they really need, uh, they're a bunch of old guys, Detroit. I mean, and it's true. They're a bunch of old guys. But one stat that impresses me for Detroit is uh, the plus minus of uh, Datsuk and a guy named Jakob Kindle, uh, who's a great defenseman. Okay. Um, next, after Detroit, we've got Dallas. And Dallas... 
I mean, they're, they're sort of... They're sort of enjoying the ride for what it is. But... I don't know if Dallas is... I mean, they won five in a row, yeah. But... I, 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 I get it's sort of like the Islanders, but this is more justifiable. They really don't have the defense to really push it ahead. Um, they, they got rid of Yager. They got rid of Whitney. Uh... Where's Ray Whitney now? Let me just check. I think he's on... No, he's still... I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. Sorry. Um, never mind. Um, but Jamie Benn, Louis Erickson are their top guys. And, um... I mean, they're doing fine. It's just the defense that's sort of struggling. They're sort of struggling. You look at some of the plus minuses, and there's a good there's a good amount of minuses in there. Carly Lettinen's a good goal, you know. It's just a, it just a, some defensive troubles, and it's just a matter of, well, you know, they might break down at the end of the season, which is completely justifiable, honestly. Um, and so you have that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've got some good depth scoring. they got 14 guys with 10 points, which is what you should have at this stage of the game. You should have at least 14 guys with, you know, at least a, at least 20 points, you know what I mean, as a in a full season anyway, I meant. Um so, I mean, that's where they should be. They're an average team overall. You know, they're, they're a good average team. You're looking at their stats, and they do what they got to do injuries-wise. They're not, I mean, they're not too bad. So, I mean, they'll be in ninth, though. I still think that they'll just, or they'll be in tenth, sorry. I think that they'll be knocked down. Like, they'll have the same amount of points as Columbus or something, but they won't have the tiebreak or something sort of like that. So, they'll be in tenth, and that'll happen then. All right, we move up. Our next team is the Minnesota Wild. Minnesota. Now, this is a team that has baffled me because I honestly thought that one or two guys would not make the difference this season anyway. Well, previously, not recently, but previously they had gone on this huge streak with Parise, Koivu, and Suter. And now they have, I mean... You know, now that they got Jason Pominville, the world's their oyster, dude. Four, four points in five games, that's good. Uh, but Zach Parise, I, I fucking hated when he left New Jersey, dude. And he he was a great player. We this, That's the guy we miss. We miss Zach Parise. If there's one player that the Devils need right now, it's, it's a Zach. And, um, I mean, really, but Ryan Suter, that was, that was a great proposition, too. 30 points for a defenseman and 40... One games, you take that to a full season. That's about eight goals and and uh, fifty assists. You know what I mean? That's that's just great. Um, plus minus wise, they're okay. You get the occasional Danny Heatley, who is struggling, by the way. And listen, I don't care what anyone says. Matt Collin is doing a fabulous job with this team. Um, he's he's an older guy, obviously. He's been playing the league for a while. He's a suitcase player, but I don't care. He's doing great. Um, but Minnesota's doing okay. I mean, they, they'll they'll stick it out. They're very well on D and in goal. In goal, they got Nicholas Backstrom is great. Josh Harding's good for what he is. And Darcy, I don't know. They got Darcy Quemper, Matt Hackett. But Minnesota, they're 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 a good team. Let me tell you. I I don't know. Um. Okay, so I I, I honestly think that Minnesota will stay where they are in seventh. That, that's pretty fair. Um. Next, we've got San Jose. Or, sorry, St. Louis. St. Louis last year, of course, made that huge break um, middle of the end of the season. They ended with 109 points. They were the second team. They were at the third best record in the entire league. And um, this year, they just can't seem to put the puck in the back of the net as much as they want to. But you know what? They've got a lot of depth scoring. They've got a lot of depth scoring. Their leading goal, the leading goals, they got shut out today, by the way. Their leading goal scorer is Chris Stewart, who has 16 goals. And it, he scored. He scores a fifth of the time. So that that's just beautiful. Um, and then you got Patrick Berglund, who's second. And Berglund might not get a lot of assists, but he scored on about a quarter of his shots. So I like where they're going. They've got a couple guys who could really blast. And if you want to put David Perron in that category, you may. They've got a lot of guys who also could pass and assist. And I compare St. Louis with Nashville a good amount. St. Louis is Nashville that could score more. And it honestly is. They're really defense. They've been a defensive-based team ever since Brett Hole left, and it's worked. It really has for a while. It hasn't got them to the cup, but it's gotten them to the playoffs numerous times. 
and they're, they're pretty stable where they are. I got to I got to say they're pretty stable. And one of their biggest assets is their dual goaltending. In this case it is try fucking goaltending. And um you got Jake Allen who's a big surprise who actually could be their starter and it wouldn't matter. Brian Elliott and then Yaroslav Halak, but he's injured. Yaroslav Halak is injured. Also, Jamie Langenbrunner and TJ Oshie's injured. Remember, if TJ Oshie was in there, he'd be doing well. He's about uh, two thirds a point a game. So, uh, but Halak is injured. Um, Elliot, he's he's not having a great year, but it's Jake Allen that's doing well, and it's a collective goaltending. It really is. And they're doing fine. They're doing fine where they are, and I like it. And I like where they are, and I like what Ken Hitchcock's doing with them. And remember, it's a short season, so teams aren't going to be up to par like they usually are. And um, that's that. So I, I predict that they'll, I guess they'll, they'll stay in sixth. No, fuck that noise. They will go up to fifth. I say that they will go up to fifth. I say that they will. Sorry, I say that they move up to fifth by the end of the year. And you know. Hey, why not? Uh, St. Louis, even though they lost two in a row, um, they play a team like, they play Colorado twice, they play Dallas, and they play Phoenix, three of those four, and they play Vancouver. They should go 3-1-1 one, one in those games, honestly. you uh, The team that we're going to review next plays a little bit more tougher teams uh, who should maybe go 2-2. Two and two. And the team we're going to review next, of course, is the San Jose Sharks, a team which many question, are they fading? Because as we know, the Sharks started out like crazy back in the early 2000s. Mid-2000s, they were great. Finally, they reached their peak in 08 09 in terms of regular season. They made it to a couple of conference finals after that. And then they were in seventh and were easily knocked out in the first round. But this year, they are not doing particularly badly. Uh, I like what Todd McLellan's doing with the team. Uh, he's, he's really styling them into his own you know, defensive core. I mean, they've been a big offensive team for years. Now it's time to be back in the defense. Joe Thornton getting older, getting wiser, though. He has 29 assists, 36 points in the games. Um, Logan Couture and Patrick Marlowe are the big goal scorers. Marlowe leading the team in goals, which I like. Uh, and Pavelski tops them all off with about even. So he's 12 and 13. So you got a guy who gets the assists. You get two guys who get the goals. And you get a guy who gets a little bit of both. And then Dan Boyle is their best defenseman. It's really just once you get down to the depth scoring. I mean, for a team who wants Scott Gomez, all I gotta say is you gotta have some some problems. I mean, he's got a three point five shooting fucking fucking shooting percentage for fuck's sake. Um, in net, you gotta be you gotta love what Anthony Niemi's doing. I I gotta say, Anthony Niemi's doing great. I think it's just with the playoff push in still, it's really their depth scoring that will really kill them. And I think that well. They'll just be knocked down to six. That's all I think. And it'll be very close. Don't get me wrong. But they're a great team. They are a great team, San Jose. And uh, in the playoff prediction video, we will see what they'll have, what we'll do. Okay. Now we move up to number uh, four currently, which is L.A. The defending Stanley Cup champion Los Angeles Kings. Now let me tell you. They are doing great. They've got 14 guys with your 10 points. They've got 7 guys with 20 points. Two of them are defensemen, which you always want. The leading scorer is Anze Kopitar, who is just excelling right now. And then they have Jeff Carter, who could really score. 24 goals. He's 3rd or 4th in goals. I forget which. And the Kings, they're moving along. They're doing very well. They've won their last two. They won 6-2-2. Six six, two two. Um, I like what they're doing. Jonathan Quick, though is having a tough year. He's having some sort of Stanley Cup hangover. But it's Bernie Mac, baby. Jonathan Bernier, who is really uh, excelling. And, uh, I mean, he, he's saving this team in terms of goaltending. And in terms of goals against and goals for, they're pretty even. They're sort of in the middle front of the pack. So, I mean, LA's going to do very well. Um, I like their defense. I like their defense, though, especially their first line. Uh, defensively, they're a great team in the terms of that. And uh, another guy who could score is Dustin Brown, who's their captain. He's a big uh, sniper. So um, I like that. Uh, so they will be fourth. All right, we move on to the top three teams. 
And number three, we got Vancouver and the Canucks. They were shaky, but they have secured their place, I think, in this third place. The Sedin Twins, baby. They are doing very well. Uh, almost a point a game for each of them. It, I think I really think it's the goal scoring that could they could fix, but their their goal is great. I mean, Luong was actually very good as a backup. Corey Schneider, baby, he's he's on fire. Five shutouts, two point fourteen goals against average, fifteen wins. There, yeah, he's on fire. Um, and then on D they've got Ham Hughes, who's really a breakout. Uh, Ham Hughes was not really known. Too much as a score until last season, actually. Um, he was a, I mean, I always, he's a two way, I see him as a two way defenseman. He's a good player. I always figured him as a hitter. I don't know why, but I guess he is. Um, and then you get, uh, the, the, see, the problem with Vancouver, though, is they're sort of an oldish team. A little bit. They're sort of an oldish team. And their youngest, their top player under 25, Zach Cassian, who he's doing okay. Uh, I love the plus-minus ratings in Vancouver. They've got 14 players with over with a, at least with a plus rating. Hendrick Sedin with plus 20, Burroughs with plus 17, Yannick Hansen and Jason Garrison with plus 15, leading the way. So I love what Vancouver's doing. They are going to finish in third. So they are going to stay in third and finish in third. Okay. Um, we move on to the top two teams, and let me say these top two teams are running away with this shit. They are doing great. You get the Anaheim Ducks. We saw it with the Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks, if it hadn't been for the Chicago Blackhawks, obviously are the best team in the league right now. Bruce Boudreaux, he knows what he's doing. He fell off in a uh, wash at the end because Ovi is selfish. I don't. I, he's a great player, but he's a selfish motherfucker. But he's a great coach. I mean, they got their top score. They got... Seven guys with 20 points. They got Ryan Getzloff over a point a game, 44 and 39. All their plus minuses are great. You got Sheldon Sawyer with a plus 26. That's what you want. You want forward two could score and defensemen who have a big plus minus rating. That is that is your quintessential thing right there. And by the way, their shot percentage, they got 12 guys with an over 10% shot. So keep it up. Rat Dvorak was also big. They got new. Um... Injuries, though, doesn't really seem to affect them that much. Uh, they have one of the best goal goalie tandems. Victor Fast. I mean, the old joke was why be quick when you could be fast. It's not that old, I guess. Um, 2.16.922. And even Jonas. Jonas Hiller. We found the, we found the other Jonas brother, dude. He's doing great. Um, who is the third? Yo oh, the Goose. Oh, we, already, so we got the three Jonas brothers, dude. Um, yeah. Um, Timu Solani is old, but he can move, man. He could really move. Uh, Saku Koivu, um, he's doing great. Bobby Ryan, Corey Perry, they're all doing great. I mean, I, I have nothing bad to say about Anaheim, honestly. They're these, they're, they're middle of the pack in goals against. They're up, up, they're in the top of the pack in goals for. They just seem to have the perfect balance right now. I mean, when, when things are going well for you, even though they lost two games in a row, it's okay, you know, it's fine. They've got Columbus, Calgary, two Edmontons, and a Vancouver. So the, those are games, another 3-1-1, one, one, which they really should go. Um, and they'll stay in second. Okay, and finally, we've got the Chicago Blackhawks. Fuck yes, dude. Chicago is amazing. They are amazing. Patrick Kane... Jonathan Taves, over a point a game. They are doing the best that anyone could ever do. They are the top team in goals against. They are the second best team in goals for. They are everything. They won this huge 24-game uh, point streak. Right now, they're 32-5-4. and four. They just had a shutout win. When you, when you only go home sad five times in a season, you know you're doing fucking awesome. Um... Uh, shot percentage is always good. Guys above 10%, well, you've got nine of them. On defense, what I love to see is on defense, Duncan Keith has 23 points as a defenseman. That's always good. Injuries, they've got none. Um, Brandon Sad is another guy who could be a rookie of the year guy. Um, he has 23 points. 
in the 40 games, and that would about probably correlate to somewhere 45 to 50 if it was a full season. And he's got a good uh, he's got a good shot to him. I like him. Um, yeah. Um, on D, uh, Keith Seabrook and Letty are your top guys. And then I mean, defensively, they're all good. At plus minus, you've got the whole team is is a plus. I mean, the only two players who are Dave Boland and Sheldon Brookbank who don't really play that often are the only minuses on the team. So, and your top plus minus is Johnny Taves with plus 25. They're amazing, dude. I mean, I don't know how to put this. I really don't know how to put this any clearer. They are the top team. They are probably the best team since 19, you know, since way back from the Montreal Canadiens from the 70s. We're talking, no, I'd say Detroit 95, 96, actually. All right, here the fuck we go in net. Fucking Ray Emery, dude. 15 fucking 1. There, 15 and 1. He's lost one game, dude. A 1.90 goals against average. A .924 save percentage. Three shutouts. Then you got Corey Crawford, who's your starter. He's 17, 4 and 4. He's got a .926 save percentage. He's got a 1.92 goals against average. He's got three shutouts. This Chicago Blackhawks team is the greatest team that you have seen in a long time. You match it up with, I'd say, the top 15 teams of all, top 10 teams of all time. They would rank up there, and they are going to stay at number one, no doubt about it. They are amazing right now. You look at some of their upcoming games they've got. They've got the Dallas Stars, should be a winnable game, Nashville, winnable game, Phoenix, winnable game, Vancouver, okay, Edmonton, winnable game, Calgary, winnable game, St. Louis, okay. So they've got, I'd say, of the last game, once the last six games, seven games, they should really go 5-2-1, and one, and that end their season. That is a fucking amazing 37-6-5, or 37-7-5, and, five, and uh, I don't know what to tell you, man, but Chicago the best team, so those are my, that's my wrap-up for the West. Um, comment, do whatever, subscribe, all that shit. See you later with the playoff prediction about tomorrow. See ya.